This is the RST-135E harmonic drive mount from Rainbow Astro. And it costs 10,000 Aussie dollar dues. Unlike its name though, it is absolutely tiny and only weighs three and a half kilos. Yet Rainbow Astro thinks it can manage oh, telescopes larger and heavier than this. And if that's not enough, they say it's only got five arc seconds of periodic error and you can even image unguided. <laughs> Why? There's no need for guiding? But this is a harmonic drive mount. That can't be right. Well, let's see if that's true. Hello again, Internet. Astro with Roro here. This is a follow-up to my initial review of the Rainbow Astro RST-135E. Today, we'll be diving deep into how this mount has performed for me, the guide settings that I use, and what you can expect from this tiny mount if you buy it for yourself. If you want to see how to set up, control, and my general impressions of the mount, then be sure to check out the video linked in the description. As always, this video is agenda free and I purchased this mount myself. If you enjoy this video or find it useful, then you can help me by sharing, subscribing, or supporting me on Patreon. Now, I've owned this mount for about a year and after many nights out with it, I can conclusively say that this mount performs very well. It's certainly not for everyone though, it is very expensive, and while the performance is top-notch, you can get the same, if not better, performance for cheaper. However, you would be sacrificing a lot if you did so. As I mentioned in the intro, this mount is ultra-portable. In fact, this mount, with the tripod, pier extension, and the heaviest telescope I own, is still lighter than the weight of just my EQ6R Pro alone. If, like me, you don't have a dedicated space, you can leave your equipment set up, or if you often travel to dark sites for your imaging sessions, then the weight saving amount like this can offer really is revolutionary. Due to the small size of the mount head, I often leave the entire tripod pier and everything connected. In fact, it even fits into my boot like this, making setup and pack up at dark sites incredibly fast and easy. If, however, you have a permanent setup, then I would straight up say that this mount is not the best for you. Okay, let's talk guiding. This mount is able to comfortably work with guide exposures up to around four seconds, which is very impressive for a harmonic drive mount. Of course, you can guide at less than this, and the go-to settings I use are two to three second exposures, depending on the seeing and the focal length I'm using. For payloads under 10 kilos, like this one here, I don't use any counterweights, and it averages at half an arc second total RMS. As you can see in this guide graph from a recent night with light winds, it generally behaves very well with minimal excursions. On still nights, in really good seeing, I have even seen sustained guide performance reaching as low as 0.38 arc seconds a truly outstanding result. For heavier payloads, I find the guide numbers can wander a little bit more. This isn't down to the mount though, but rather the carbon fiber tripod I use it with. These ultralight tripods do get impacted by wind and wobble more than steel and heavier set tripods, and this effect is increased the more weight you put high up on them. As such, if you're using a tripod like this, make sure you splay the legs wide out and keep the center of gravity as low as possible. When in this kind of configuration, the RST-135E continues to perform well at a similar 0.58 arc second accuracy. These results are with the heaviest payload available to me, which weighs around 15 kilos. And yes, I do use the counterweight for anything over that 10 kilo mark. 
I am yet to test this mount with a pier or steel tripod, but you might see a slight performance improvement if you use one of those versus what I have here at the cost of less portability. With results like these though, you can comfortably image from wide field up to quite long focal lengths, even with cameras that have small pixels and achieve some beautiful results. The longest focal length I've used so far is with my Celestron 9.25 inch Edge HD, which sits around that 2.5 meter focal length mark. Like all harmonic drives, the 135E does have periodic error. And this needs to be guided out if you run at moderate to long focal lengths. I've measured this numerous times and the total peak to peak RA error is 5 arc seconds, which matches what is listed on the spec sheet. Now this is five times lower than other harmonic drive mounts thanks to a Reinshore encoder on the RA axis. But this is also a large reason for the mount's hefty price tag. Here's what the PE graph looks like for me over a 30 minute interval. Each full drive rotation takes about seven minutes and you can see the wander repeat as the drive completes a full rotation. While having low PE is very important, an often under-discussed spec is that of max drift rate. This finds the top speed that the PE moves at over the whole cycle and will determine the guide exposures you'll need to keep the mount under control. For the RST-135E, I measured this at 0.2 arc seconds per second. This means if you're imaging at very long focal lengths, you will still want to keep your guide exposures at about two seconds to catch any of those high drifts. If you're imaging at mid to short focal lengths, then this will not be a concern for you at all, and you can quite easily get away with up to four second guide exposures. In fact, for shorter focal lengths, you can image completely unguided on this mount. This is a single eight minute unguided exposure taken with my RedCat 51 and a QHY268M. This covers the entire PE cycle, and if we zoom way in, we can see the stars are still quite round at this focal length. Now, I wouldn't recommend imaging for this long unguided unless you have a very wide focal length, but I have achieved some excellent results with two minute exposures at sub 500 millimeter focal lengths. To show this off, here is the beautiful Eagle Nebula, captured with no guiding at all. This image uses about an hour's data comprised of two minute exposures in hydrogen alpha. To me, this is very impressive. After running the backlash compensation tool in PHD2, you can see that the graph shows there is virtually no backlash in this mount. This means that we can make multiple small guiding adjustments without worrying about over or under shooting our targets. You can see the PHD2 settings I use over here, although I'm sure they can still be tweaked and further improved. In general, the mount works very well with low aggression settings, allowing the encoder to generally keep the mount under control. When corrections are required, the mount responds very quickly to small pulses, so be careful not to overcorrect, else your guiding will suffer as you will seesaw back and forth on your guide logs if you're too aggressive. I do have two minor annoyances with this mount though, so let's talk a little bit about those. The software driver provides a good interface with all of the features you would expect from it, but it does look quite outdated. On Windows, it also seems to have an issue where you can't manually close the window. It just hangs if you try and you need to open Task Manager and end the process. This is admittedly a, a small bug, but it can be a bit annoying. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to be an issue when closing your connection through software like Lena, for example. Only if you want to close it directly by clicking on the little X button on the window. The other annoyance is that the altitude locks on this mount can cause some minor movement when they're engaged. This can cause your polar alignment to move slightly when you lock the mount off after you've polar aligned. Fortunately, this only impacts the altitude, which isn't something you're gonna be adjusting often unless you're traveling far from home. The best way I've discovered to manage this is to aim slightly below the pole as the locks raise the altitude slightly when they're engaged. I usually get my azimuth dialed in and leave the altitude about 10 to 15 arc minutes below perfect alignment. Then I slowly tighten the altitude locks and stop when the polar alignment lands right on. Wrapping up, how do I feel about the Rainbow Astro RST-135E and 
would I recommend it to buy? If you're looking for a very portable, very well built and very accurate mount, then honestly, it's hard to find anything else on the market that can really challenge it. It's also very capable at unguided imaging with short to moderate focal lengths, even without the need for sky modeling, thanks to that built-in encoder. What used to be a chore of setting up and packing up is now very fast and easy. And honestly, it's hard to capture how much of a large impact that, that alone has on my desire to go out an image. As the saying goes, the best tool for a job is the one you use the most. And this is now my go-to mount for all occasions. If the price is beyond your budget though, there are other harmonic drive mounts available. Unfortunately, they also have five to 10 times the periodic error that this one does and they need much more aggressive guiding to keep them under control. I hope you found this video useful and if you would like to see more reviews and tutorials then make sure you leave a comment down below with what you'd like me to review next and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video when it comes out. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro and clear skies.